It's time for Mad Kitchen Science. Today on the show, we're going to be making something called Bellini. Bellini are like mini pancakes that you make with yeast. That's why our Mad Kitchen Science experiment for this week involves yeast. Let's get to it. What is yeast? Well, yeast are single-celled fungi, distantly related to mushrooms, like my yeasty here. Hi, I'm a yeasty. So, in order to grow, like most things, yeasties here need to get food. So, they get the food from their surroundings. Their favorite is sugar. Yep. When Once the yeasties eat the sugar, they produce a lot of gas, called carbon dioxide. Excuse me. And all that gas causes whatever the yeasty is eating to poof up. That is exactly right. Like when you make bread, the little yeasties in the bread, well, they're real yeast in the bread, but we're just going to use the yeasties. All the yeasties in the bread eat the sugar and whatever they can find in the dough. Therefore, they make the gas carbon dioxide, which gets trapped in the dough, as bubbles. When you bake the bread, the bubbles get trapped in the dough. Like this. This experiment we will be doing today, um, we'll be doing it from the book Science Experiments You Can Eat. And here's what you need. A thermometer, a package of yeast of course, sugar, corn syrup, corn starch, some measuring items here, a cake pan, and make sure it doesn't have a hole in it so when you add the water on the bottom it doesn't leak. And then holders here, three of them, and you can label them for the things that we need with a whiteboard marker so it doesn't stay on there forever. And that's all you need. The first thing we do is dissolve one dry yeast packet into a half cup of 110 degree water. You can warm your water in the microwave and then take its temperature, but if your faucet water is left to run on hot, it might be warm enough, like ours is. Next, we evenly divide the yeast mixture into our three beakers, which are labeled sugar, corn syrup, and corn starch. Then we add one tablespoon of corn syrup into the one labeled corn syrup. One tablespoon of corn starch into the corn starch one. And then plain white sugar in the sugar one. Then we place the containers into our cake pan and fill it with more 110 degree water. Make sure the level of water is high enough to be deeper than your yeast mixture in the containers. Then we take some initial observations. Here are some things you can th think about while observing. Which of the items we added starts producing bubbles right away? What are the size of the bubbles in the foam? Are there any differences in smell of the three substances? Once you've written your observations in your notebook, set the kitchen timer for 15 to 20 minutes, then observe again. Write down your observations to the same questions. You can then wait another 15 to 20 minutes and take a final set of observations. You might have noticed a few things when observing the various substances the yeast uses food. One, the sugar started bubbling and forming the fastest and produced a lot of foam, but stopped bubbling the soonest. Two, the corn starts barely bubbled at all, but slowly started producing some bubbles and foam at the end of the observation time. And three, the corn syrup produced a steadier rate of bubbling. The bubbles weren't as big as the sugar bubbles, but there are as many of them throughout the observation time. So what does this have to do with cooking and what does it have to do with making blini and crepes? It has to do with blini because when we're going to make the blini, say, or anything really that when you want to be poofy, you're going to need to use yeast because yeast makes the gas that makes the bubbles. And depending on the different ingredients you use, you get different kinds of bubbles and texture, like in this bread. The texture is more smooth and the bubbles are more condensed. But, in an in English muffin, the texture is rough and the bubbles are bigger. That is why you need yeast. We hope you enjoyed the show today. For more information and recipes, please check us out online at www.twokidscooking.com. Thanks for coming and see you next time. Bye!